From the moment his hiring was announced, we all knew Chan Gailey was not destined to be in Miami for the long haul. Even if he manages to get the offense running the way it's supposed to, and as of this writing, it seems to be moving in the right direction, Gailey is going to be gone from South Beach within the next couple of seasons. Which of course got me thinking, who could replace him? Who could take over and lead this unit into the future of Dolphin offense? Well, just so happens I've looked into that very topic and compiled my top five candidates. Let's get started. Number five, Eric Bieniemy. As probably the biggest snub from 2019's class of new head coaches, his inclusion on this list is more of a formality as it's unlikely he'd make a lateral move since he'll presumably be up for a head coaching job next. But for the sake of being reasonable, let's check him out. So during his time as Kansas City's offensive coordinator, Bieniemy has overseen one of the Chiefs' most prolific offenses in franchise history. He's helped Patrick Mahomes become the fastest quarterback in NFL history to reach 9,000 passing yards and 75 touchdowns in just 30 games. With Bieniemy's help, Travis Kelsey became the fastest tight end to reach 500 career receptions in NFL history and the first tight end to record back-to-back 1,200-yard -back seasons. And Tyreek Hill became the fastest wide receiver in Chiefs history to record 4,000 career receiving yards tallying 4,054 in 58 games. Starting to see a trend here? In 2019, the Chiefs offense finished in the top 10 in total yards per game, pass yards per game, yards per play, and total points scored. Now, while the argument could be and likely will be made that Andy Reid is the real reason for the offense's success, what cannot be argued is the track record of the coaching candidates to come out of Reid's coaching tree. As of 2020, a whopping 10 of Reed's assistants have become head coaches. Five are still head coaches, and two have won Super Bowls. Those are pretty good odds. As such, Biennemi likely won't be a candidate, but if he is, ooh. Number four, Steve Sarkeesian. This one would seem a bit more obvious as Sarkeesian did and currently still serves as the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach at Alabama, where he coached none other than Miami's 2020 first round pick Tua Turtle Toyota, who under Sarkeesian's tutelage threw for 2,840 yards, 33 touchdowns to just three interceptions in nine games before his season was cut short by the hip injury. Sarkeesian helped guide Tua to a career-high 71.4% completion percentage. Now, prior to that, Steve was coordinating an Atlanta Falcons offense that finished in the top 10 in the NFL in passing yards, total yards, and scoring. Quarterback Matt Ryan was third in the NFL in passing yards while tossing 35 touchdowns. Wide receiver Julio Jones caught 113 passes for 1,677 yards and eight touchdowns, with then-rookie Calvin Ridley adding 64 catches for 821 yards and a team-high 10 scores, pacing all rookies in receiving yards and touchdowns. Steve was also previously a college head coach, amassing a 46-35 and record and, according to him, finishing every college football season he's called plays in with a 1,000-yard rusher. Easy to see why he might be an attractive option for Miami if they were looking to replace Chan soon. Number three, Rhett Lashley. Coincidentally, as of this writing, currently the offensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes. So he wouldn't have to move far. And according to UM head coach Manny Diaz, he's directed some of the most innovative offenses in college football in recent years. Offenses that attack quickly, creatively, and efficiently. Of course, he speaks most recently of 2019, where while serving as the offensive coordinator for SMU, the Mustangs finished 10 and three with an offense that ranked seventh in the FBS in scoring, 13th in passing offense, ninth in total offense, and 12th in first downs gained. They also managed to set a school record with 35 rushing touchdowns. Under Lashley's guidance, quarterback Shane Buccelli threw for 3,929 yards, 34 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions while completing 63% of his passes, 
Meanwhile, running back Xavier Jones rushed for 1,276 yards and 23 scores, averaging 5.2 yards per carry. Both Buccelli and Jones were first-team All-AAC selections. Prior to joining SMU staff, Lashley served as an offensive coordinator for seven seasons, spending 2017 at UConn, where he drastically improved the Huskies' offense from 122nd in the nation to 49th. Prior to that, at Auburn, managing one of the more prolific offenses in college football, helping them reach the 2013 SEC Championship, a BCS Championship berth, and the 2016 Sugar Bowl. Lashley also served as the quarterback's coach and demonstrated an impressive ability to develop talent. And he's been a finalist for the Broyles Award, presented to the nation's top assistant coach on two occasions. Suffice to say, the Dolphins' next great offensive coordinator might already be in Hard Rock Stadium, albeit on Saturdays. Number 2. Josh Heupel This one's a bit of a wild card considering the rather enticing offer the Finns would have to propose to coax him away from UCF, where as their head coach, he's, as of this writing, sitting on a 23-4 record which have included a flurry of glossy stats and national rankings, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. Taking over in 2018, Heupel's impact was felt immediately as he led the Knights to their second consecutive undefeated regular season and an American Athletic Conference championship. He became just the third coach in history to lead a team to an undefeated regular season in his first year as head coach. Preaching a 1-0 mentality every week, Heupel's fast-paced 2018 offense posted 43 points per game, ranking 6th in the nation with an average margin of victory of 20.5 points. His Knights in 2019 also averaged 43 points, good for number 5 NCAA ranking and had the fewest turnovers of any team in the AAC. The 2018 offense churned out an average of 522.7 yards per game to finish the season ranked 5th in the nation, and the 2019 version proved even better than that, averaging 536.6 yards, best in UCF history and ranking 4th nationally. The Knights' ground game set a program single season record with 3,448 yards on the ground in 2018, as UCF averaged 265 rushing yards per game, 8th in the country. Running back Greg McRae in 2018 became UCF's first 1,000-yard rusher since 2013 with 1,182 yards on the ground, fourth most in program history. Then in 2019, a diversified Knights run game saw the top four runners combine for 2,488 yards, 27 touchdowns, and an amazing average of 6.46 yards per carry. Those figures allowed UCF to average more than 200 yards per game on the ground over two straight years for the first time ever. Still not impressed? Well, prior to him bringing the motherfucking ruckus to UCF, he served as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Missouri for two seasons. Prior to his arrival at Missouri, they ranked 124th in the nation in total offense. After he took over as their offensive coordinator, the Tigers led the Southeastern Conference and were ranked number 13 in the nation, averaging 500 yards per game, and they got even better the year after. Missouri quarterback Drew Locke blossomed under Heupel's tutelage. Locke led the SEC in passing as a sophomore, throwing for 3,399 yards and 23 touchdowns. He followed that with an even stronger campaign in 2017, passing for 3,964 yards and an SEC record 44 touchdown tosses. And a little fun fact for you to run and tell everyone you know, Josh Heupel was also drafted by the Miami Dolphins in the sixth round of the 2001 NFL Draft, the same one they got Chris Chambers in. While his playing career didn't quite pan out in South Beach, perhaps it would be poetic justice for him to now lead the Dolphins offense from the sidelines. Hmm? And now, a couple honorable mentions. Garrett Riley. Yes, Lincoln Riley's brother. Mike Yursich. Gerard, or Gerard Parker. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name. And I want to take a quick moment to ask you to like, subscribe, and ding the bell to stay up to date on new videos dropping. And check me out on the Finn Addicts Network. We have a podcast by the same name, that you can find here on YouTube where we obviously talk dolphin football 
and interview amazing guests. Just recently, we interviewed Ricky Williams, and before that, Chris Chambers, Sammy Smith, and many more. Seriously, you're going to want to check it out when you're through here. The network has been growing, and we have brought in other shows, including the Welcome to Perfectville podcast, and someone y'all might be more familiar with on here, Dougly Do-Wrong. So come check us out. And finally, number one. Kendall Bryles. Son of the legendary disgraced Baylor head coach Art Bryles, Kendall knows a thing or two about offense. Like the previous entry on this list, Bryles runs a variation of the veer and shoot offense popularized by Art Bryles during his time at Baylor. Also like Heupel, he's said to have an innovative offensive approach, directing offenses that have been successful by both running and throwing the football in some of the nation's most competitive conferences. He comes with a reputation of turning around offenses, seemingly having done so at each of his previous stops. In his lone season at FSU, he oversaw a unit that improved in total offense, scoring, red zone efficiency, and third down conversions, led by a pair of all ACC performers, running back Cam Akers and wide receiver Tamari and Terry. Akers ran for 1,144 yards and 14 touchdowns during the regular season, averaging 104 yards per game. Terry caught 30 passes for 1,188 yards and 9 touchdowns. Prior to that, Bryles called one of the most explosive offenses in the country in 2018 at Houston, ranking in the top 10 in both total offense and points per game. Houston's offense was epic, scoring at least 30 points in each of the first 12 games of the season, including an NCAA leading 10 games of at least 40 points. Junior quarterback De'Eric King, remember him, flourished under Bryles' direction, putting together one of the best seasons in the country in 2018. King, who was injured in the team's 11th game, needed only 10 games to break the American Athletic Conference's single-season touchdown responsibility record with 50. His average of 27.5 points per game led the nation and was four points higher than the next closest competitor, Heisman Trophy finalist and later first round pick in the NFL draft, Dwayne Haskins. King also led the AAC in total offense, passing touchdowns, passing efficiency, and completion percentage. During that same season, under Browse's direction, the Cougars had 42 scoring drives of less than two minutes and ranked fifth in the country with 92 plays of 20 plus yards, with the offense's 44 plays of at least 30 yards ranking seventh in the nation. Prior to that, Bryles had coordinated the offense at FAU, helping the Owls to the sixth best rushing attack in the FBS with 285.3 yards per game. The same offense ranked eighth nationally with 40.6 points per game and ninth in total offense with 498 yards per game. The Owls offense helped lead the program to its first Conference USA championship and an 11-3 record, including a win in the Boca Raton Bowl. Running back Devin Singletary became FAU's first Associated Press All-American and was named CUSA MVP after leading the nation with 32 rushing touchdowns. He rushed for 1,920 yards before being picked in the third round of the NFL Draft. And of course, before that, Bryle spent the first nine years of his coaching career at Baylor, helping the Bears to unprecedented success, including back-to-back -back Big 12 titles. He served in numerous roles for the Bears as the inside wide receivers coach, passing game coordinator, and recruiting coordinator before taking over as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for his final two seasons in Waco. He was a Broyles Award finalist in 2015 after leading Baylor's offense to historic numbers, leading the NCAA with 48 points per game and 616 yards of total offense, the third highest average in a single season in NCAA history. Offensive lineman Spencer Drago was a consensus All-American, and wide receiver Corey Coleman won the Bolitnikoff Award. Bryles and Baylor ended that season with a win over number 10 North Carolina in the Russell Athletic Bowl, racking up an NCAA Bowl record 645 rushing yards and a bowl record 756 yards of total offense. His 2016 offense led the Big 12 in rushing with 241 yards per game, and his 2013 offense produced the second highest season average total offense in NCAA history with 618 yards per game. Beyond Corey Coleman, 
He also tutored four All-Americans and five eventual NFL receivers, including Terrence Williams and Kendall Wright. Williams, who was a third round pick by the Dallas Cowboys in the 2013 NFL Draft, broke the Baylor single season receiving record and led the nation with 1,832 yards on his way to being only the sixth unanimous All-American in program history. Wright, the 20th overall selection in the 2012 NFL Draft, was an All-American in 2011 and broke every major school receiving record. Even with that impressive track record, what really sets Kendall Bryles apart as the best potential candidate, aside from the fact that he's just so damn entertaining to watch on the sidelines, is the fact that he doesn't want to be a head coach. In 2019, following Willie Taggart's dismissal as FSU's head coach, after it became apparent that he was a jackass, a reporter asked Bryles, then FSU's offensive coordinator, if he wanted the job, to which he responded, and I paraphrase a little, that while he wouldn't turn down the opportunity if it were presented to him, he wasn't actively seeking it out either. And that is music to the ears of a defensive-minded head coach, like Coach Flores. But what do y'all think? Do you have a better candidate in mind, or am I the only one crazy enough to think about this kind of shit mid-season? Let me know in the comments, but before you go, what if I told you you could get a whopping 20% off your order at manscaped.com? You'd probably say, F yes, I need a lawnmower 3.0 and I need it something fierce. Well, if you enter the promo code FINSUP when you order, you can do just that and get free shipping to boot. So what are you waiting for? Get over there. Your balls will thank you. The preceding video is brought to you by Manscaped and the Fanatics Network, but does not necessarily represent the views held by either of those entities. This was made in a somewhat lighthearted manner by a man who has never claimed to be an expert of anything, but certainly has thighs powerful enough to crush men's skulls like sparrow's eggs between them. Ever the conversationalist, Savak welcomes feedback and dialogue, but encourages those with nothing nice to say to take a long walk off a short pier. All rights reserved, your results may vary.